My name is Dr. Anthony Rizzi, and I'm a physicist who has taught at University of Colorado, Princeton, and LSU, and have also been involved as senior scientists at the California Institute of Technology for the gravity wave detector called LIGO. It stands for Laser Gravitational Wave Observatory. And I've taken some time off to write a book called The Science Before Science, which is what this lecture series is based on. Many will say that the world goes around the sun. Actually, uh, I think you could make the argument that the world revolves today around modern science. And particularly, it's probably very evident to people technology, which comes out of the science, is controlling our world. But a lot of people haven't thought that our very thinking is controlled by modern science. I'll give you a few examples, the Earth's rotation, the Earth's revolution, and the, and the shape of the Earth. How many of you actually feel like you're moving at 1,000 miles an hour? How many feel like you're, going, like you're on the surface of a ball that's doing that? How many feel like you're moving 67,000 miles an hour around the sun? Uh, and why do you believe these things? I mean, this is not even a faith, because a faith is something you acknowledge is, is coming from somewhere that you haven't, uh, you're trusting something. It's a blind faith, because you don't even realize it's a faith why you believe these things that are so uh, apparently averse to what you see. Uh, for example, the roundness of the Earth. And you haven't flown around in space and looked back. Most of us haven't. You haven't flown around the world keeping your, following your nose and going uh, to see that the world is round. And, you know, there's a comparison often made, often made to medieval man. And he's said to be backwards because he had this faith in the Bible. Well, their faith at, at least was an acknowledged faith. Our faith in science is a blind faith. Many think that this discovery that the Earth is round, for example, is the discovery of modern science. Indeed, medieval man knew that the Earth was round. Now, another example from science that people are, learn very early is about the atom. We're taught the atom is made of a nucleus and an outer part called the electrons. And to give you a scale size for this, what we're often told is if the nucleus is the size of a basketball, then the edge of the atom is like two miles away. And reasoning goes further from this, because when people are taught this, they aren't explicitly told this, but it's behind the scenes, that, look, well, that means that, you know, there's mostly nothing in an atom. And so if we're mostly nothing, does that mean that all the common sense things that seem to tell us that things aren't mostly nothing, including us, are not true and that our senses themselves are not trustworthy? Um, of course, this is not true. The senses themselves were used to get what we know about the atom. Science is actually a second or third level of knowledge or fourth level of knowledge in, when it comes to talking about the atom. Uh, indeed, the fact that we can do science is already showing that we're far from nothing, that we're capable of profound understanding. And so we kind of we kind of got to remember where we start from. We'll talk more about that later. But science seems to generate this nihilism. It seems to j cause this sort of thinking of ourselves as, as not as important as maybe we once thought. We have to understand this if we want to understand our culture. Science is um, pr prevalent, at, as we've seen, and even in our thinking. And, but the, there's also this negative effect that we just talked about, like that comes from deductions from things like the atom. Some argue it's science's fault, and here's how they argue. They say science is very mechanical and unconcerned with the individual dignity of a man, more concerned with how to make things go. Uh, and then scientific theories like relativity, which we'll talk about, and quantum mechanics, have supposedly undone things like causality and what we know about time, sort of robbed us of all our connection with our ancestor. Our human patrimony has been kind of ripped away from us, they claim. And it's alienated man from himself. We have nuclear weapons, cloning, pollutions, machines replacing uh, man in, in all kinds of environments. And furthermore, you have this split now that C.P. Snow, Snow talked about, the humanities on one side and science on the other side, and science is often blamed for this. And as science, this science-centered culture has gone further, 
And it seems to have generated within itself this de a deconstructivist mentality which says that everything is a mere construct of ourselves. So is science in some sense suicidal? Alan Sokol, the physicist who recently wrote an article that I describe in the book that I won't go into here, sort of seems to demonstrate that there is this suicidal tendency that has generated not within science so much, but within the culture generated by science. So is science the problem? Well, even the most violent haters of science or scoffers at science or, or dislikers of science would acknowledge there's convenience uh, and that includes advanced materials that allow us to do all kinds of things. The sanitary conditions, the medical things, the information technology, including the very video you're watching now, computations and commu advanced communications, cell phones, all kinds of things that science has given us. So we can't say it's science itself. What is the problem here? Well, you have to say science has a crude negative so that the problem is something's missing. It's not that science itself is bad, but something has been left out, and that something is philosophy. Philosophy is the study of the first principles of all things. It comes from the Greek philia, sophia, love, literally love of wisdom. It satisfies our highest need, which is a need to know. We need this science that comes before science, and we'll see in many ways that we need it, not the least of which is to protect our culture from this suicidal tendency. And philosophy, as Einstein said, and Aristotle said before him, it depends on this childlike wonder of wondering about the world and what the world is like. So to fix this problem that's been linked with science, so we need to reawaken our sense of awe, and we'll do that by doing philosophy. And in particular, I want to bring out an example here that I saw as a teenager that really enkindled my sense of, of awe, one of the things that kept me on my path to going into physics, and that is the, this Maxwell speed curve. This speed curve was figured out in the 1800s, and these measurements were done in 1955. And you see that they fell exactly on the curve. This is something of revealing something of the order and beauty of, the, of creation. Those types of things are, are the things that are going to pull us through and help us to try and see what, what the problem here is with science and at the same time help us learn better what the things are important and what are the baseline things and what are the things that come out of those baseline things. We've already begun our efforts in philosophy, as you might have already guessed, because by examining the roots in these three examples, we've already started asking questions about what things mean. We found out that we need this science before science, and this before we already started to use in a, in a non-material way, in a, if you will, a non-chronological way. It's, it's more like what, it's not like the before in the, the, in the sense of a, the engine comes and then after that comes a coal car. The coal car, the engine doesn't come before the coal car. And that, I mean, we're not using before in that literal sense. We're using it in the sense that a side comes before the concept of a triangle. A triangle is a something with three sides. So in order to think of a triangle, you first have to have the idea of a side. So we're using before in this general sense. So we've already started diving into the philosophical ideas. Philosophy is unavoidable. To try to say you don't need it is already to start doing it. <laughs>